Alright, in this video I'd like to talk about factoring an expression that's called the difference of two squares. But before we get to that, I want to refresh your memories on multiplying out two binomials, right? So x plus y times x minus y. Just multiply that out like before. You'd have, you have to distribute the x through and then distribute the y through, right? So when you distribute the x through, we get x squared minus xy, and then distribute the y through, you get plus xy, and then minus y squared. Right? That's just previous knowledge. And then we notice that the middle term here, the negative xy and the positive xy, they disappear, right? Because they're the same but opposite signs. So this just goes to x squared minus y squared. All right, so anything, so anytime we have a binomial um, times a binomial that, that's of this form, x plus y times x minus y, it's always going to multiply out to be x squared minus y squared. Now, we're talking about factoring, so we want to take an expression such as x squared minus y squared, and write it as a product of factors, right? So anything of the form x squared minus y squared will factor into x plus y times x minus y if we just kind of work our way backwards, right? If we know that x plus y times x minus y has to equal x squared minus y squared, then we know that x squared minus y squared has no choice but to equal x plus y times x minus y, and that is our difference of two squares formula x squared minus y squared equals x plus y times x minus y. But I'm going to have you think of it a different way. Think of this as something, the x there, something squared minus something else squared. Think of it as something squared minus something else squared, right? Instead of just x and y, because we're not just going to have x's and y's. We're going to have all kinds of things, right? So we want to think of it as something squared minus something something squared. So that's where the difference, you got the subtraction there, of two squares. Something squared minus something else squared. All right? And that always factors into um, something plus something else times something minus the something else. All right? Let's look at some examples. Factor x squared minus 9. So the first thing we always want to look for when factoring is the greatest common factor. Right? Is there something common to all your terms in the polynomial? Well, there's not here, just, just a 1, right? So there is no greatest common factor. Next thing we'll look for is if you have two terms. All right, so if you have two terms, then if it's going to factor, it needs to factor into the form of the difference of two squares, something squared minus something else squared. So that's the question. Is this something squared minus something else squared? Well, we got the x squared, so there's something squared, minus 9. 9 can be thought of as what, though? Right, 9 can be thought of as 3 squared, right? So we do have something squared minus something squared. So we have the first something plus, and what was it that we squared here to get the 9? 3, right? Because remember, 9 is the same as 3 squared. And then we have x minus 3, right? If you multiply out, and you should do this, if you multiply out x plus 3 times x minus 3, just go off and do it on the side, you're going to get x squared minus 9 back because the middle term stuff is going to disappear because you'll have a positive 3x and a negative 3x. With me? All right, what about this one? a squared minus 4b squared. So again, we're thinking of this as something squared minus something squared. Well, you have a squared, so a is the first something, and then you get this 4b squared thing. Hmm. Can we think of it a different way? Well, let's rewrite this as a squared minus, now 4b squared. We'd like to rewrite that thing as, if it's possible, as something raised to the second power. Right? Everybody see what that was going to be? So you can do this as 2b to the second power. Everybody agree that 2b to the second power is the same thing as 4b squared? Everybody see that? I'm only writing this out so we can see what the, the quote-unquote something is that we're squaring. Right? So we have a squared, and then we have 2b squared, and we have the difference of those two things. And now it's easy to see what the somethings are, right? So we can keep going and factor this into a plus 2b and a minus 2b. The first something plus the second something, and the first something minus the second something. All right, so everybody see that a squared minus 4b squared goes to a plus 2b, a minus 2b. This is the factored form we're looking for right here. Right? This intermediary blue step that we have here, that's just to help us see how to get to this red stuff over here on the right, how to get it factored. Understand? All right. So um, one other thing I want to point out, though, is that we wrote, we've been writing this as a plus 2b and a minus 2b, but it could just as easily be written as a minus 2b times a plus 2b. Right? That's the same thing. 
right? Think of this one up here. This could be the same thing as x minus 3 times x plus 3. So it doesn't really matter if you if you put the x minus 3 first or the x plus 3 first. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that you've got x minus 3 and x plus 3, um, or you've got a plus 2b and a minus 2b. All that matters is you're just multiplying those things together, right? The order doesn't matter. All right, let's keep going. All right, so 64m squared minus 25 in n squared. All right, so again, uh, the harder part is going to be trying to figure out, well, is this something squared minus something else squared? Right? So let's look at the 64m squared. Well, 64. Uh, what squared is 64? All right, that's 8. And then you got the m, right? So we can rewrite this first part. We can think about this first term, the 64m squared, as 8m squared. Remember, this intermediary step here is what we're thinking of it as, right? And then minus, and what about this 25n squared? Well, that's 5n squared. So we're thinking of 64m squared minus 25n squared as 8m raised to the second power minus 5n raised to the second power. If we can, if we can see that, if we can see that, that this expression really is this expression, then it helps us figure out how to factor that, right? So we'd have 8m minus 5n times 8m plus 5n. And that's it. If you multiply this out, you'll get 64m squared minus 25n squared. Right? So the stuff in the middle, whether you write it down or not, it, it doesn't matter. You need, to, you need to think of it. You need to be able to see 64m squared as being 8m raised to the second power. We need to be able to see that in our mind. All right? Okay, let's do, let's do a few more. All right, what about x squared plus 25? All right, well, we've got x squared, so some, the first something is x, and we've got 25, uh, and so that, it would be 5 squared, right? So you have the x and the 5. But notice this is not a difference of two squares. This is a sum of two squares. This is x squared plus 25. The sum of two squares does not factor over the real numbers, right? The formula was the difference of two squares. x squared minus 25 would factor over the real numbers. x squared plus 25 does not factor. So we would say um, does not factor. We could say does not factor. Or we often write prime, right? Uh, it, either one of those, right? It does not factor any farther, right? It's very important we recognize the sum of two squares um, and the uh, difference of two squares. We are factoring the difference of two squares right now, not the sum of two squares. They do not factor over the real numbers. All right, so 24x squared minus 54. Let's look at example five. All right, we got kind of lazy with this on the pr previous couple of examples. The uh, first thing you always look for when factoring is, is the greatest common factor. Always look for the greatest common factor first, right? All right, so what's common to 24x squared minus 54? Well, 6. So we can factor a 6 out, and that will leave 4x squared minus 9. Okay, that's great. We factored the 6 out. But now we have this 4x squared minus 9. We need to see if that factors any farther. Well, you have two terms. So um, is it the difference of two squares? Do you have something squared minus something else squared? Everybody see that we can write this as, so the 6 comes along for the ride, and 4x squared minus 9 goes to 2x plus 3 and 2x minus 3, right? Because 2x is the first something and 3 is the second something, right? So that's it. It factors into 6 times 2x plus 3 times 2x minus 3. Because 2x plus 3 doesn't factor any farther, 2x minus 3 doesn't factor any farther. That's how you know you are finished. All right, let's look at another one. x to the fourth minus 16. All right, again, first thing you look for when factoring is the greatest common factor. There is no greatest common factor, right? Because it's just x to the fourth minus 16. So now you say, all right, we have two terms. So if this is going to factor, it needs to factor into the difference of two squares. So I need to figure out, do I have something squared minus something squared? Well, we can think of x to the fourth as x squared squared, right? And you can think of 16 as 4 squared. Everybody see the something squared minus something squared? So now we can write this as x squared plus 4 
times x squared minus 4, right, by the difference of two squares formula. And now, go back and check each of your factors, right? I'm kind of building you up to this. Uh, the, the, the plan of attack is once you factor it once, look at your factors and see if they factor any farther, right? So x squared plus 4, well, that's the sum of two squares, right? That's not going to factor anymore, right, just from the uh, number 4 up here, example 4. But x squared minus 4, well, that's the difference of two squares again. x squared minus 4 does, uh, does indeed factor, right? So we rewrite this thing now as x squared plus 4 does not factor anymore, so it just comes along for the ride. And then x squared minus 4 goes to x minus 2 times x plus 2. And then you check x plus 2, x minus 2, they don't factor any farther, so we are finished. This, fact, this is as factored as far as it can go. Alright, with me on the idea? Alright, let's look at one more. Alright, 16x to the 8th minus 81z to the 4th. Alright, so again, you look for the greatest common factor. Greatest common factor between 16x to the 8th and 81z to the 4th. All right, there is no greatest common factor. Next thing you look for is how many terms do I have? We have two. So right now, if it's going to factor, it's going to factor into the difference of two squares. All right, so they, we, need to, we need to see if we can think of this as something squared minus something squared. Well, 16x to the 8th. Now, that can be thought of as 4x to the 4th squared. Can everybody see that? 4x to the 4th squared is the same thing as 16x to the 8th. Right? We're using those properties of exponents from, from a while back. Right? Then minus, what about 81z to the 4th? Well, 81, that'd be 9z to the 4th, so that's z squared. So we would have 9z squared squared. Everybody see that? All right. So now we have something squared minus something squared. So we can factor this into 4x to the 4th minus 9z squared times 4x to the 4th plus 9z squared. All right, now check each of your factors to see if they factor anymore. Well, we have 4x to the 4th minus 9z squared. Uh, there's no greatest common factor. You have two terms, uh, and there is a minus. So the question is, is this the difference of two squares? Well, 4x to the 4th can be thought of as 2x squared squared, right? And 9z squared can be thought of as 3z raised to the second power. So yes, this is the difference of two squares. We can write this as 2x squared minus 3z times 2x squared plus 3z. Right? This part right here factors into this blue. 2x squared minus 3z, 2x squared plus 3z. Can we all see that? All right, so once we see that, we say, all right, that's factored. Now, 4x to the 4th plus 9z squared. Well, that's the sum of two squares. That's not going to factor for us right now. So 4x to the 4th plus 9z squared and then 2x squared minus 3z doesn't factor anymore, 2x squared plus 3z doesn't factor anymore, so we have just completely factored the expression 16x to the 8th minus 81z to the 4th. Now I agree, this thing that I just rectangled off down here, it looks a lot more complicated than 16x to the 8th minus 81z to the 4th. Right? But the, the, what we're trying to do here is learn how to rewrite expressions in terms of a product of factors. Later on, uh, these products will help us find other things. All right, so that's all we have for the difference of two squares. Uh, study well, and please let me know if you have any questions.